What is up everybody? My name is Kyle. I am part of the Boat Breakers, which is the 11th best YouTube channel. There's absolutely no statistical evidence for that, but that's what we like to call ourselves. And if you want to help us become the 10th best YouTube channel when it comes to cruising, be sure to hit the subscribe button below. With all of the hype that the Utopia of the Seas has been generating over the last couple of months, people are starting to look forward to the new Star of the Seas. And let's talk about why the ship is going to be awesome, but comparing it to the Utopia of the Seas because they both offer two totally different experiences. And let's just dive right into it. The Star of the Seas is the second ship in the Icon class, and this will be the world's largest ship when it comes out compared to the Utopia Seas, which is actually the third largest ship in the world. Granted, they are two totally different classes of ships, and we'll talk more about that once we get a little bit more into the video. Pete just got off the Utopia and honestly couldn't believe how impressive this ship was. Obviously, it is not an Icon-class ship, but it is an incredible ship in its own right. So let's talk features of both of these amazing ships and start to really dive into the key differences that these two ships are gonna have. The Star of the Seas is gonna have a record-breaking six water slides and the world's largest water park at sea when this ship comes out. They will be calling the water park category six, which references the six water slides. Compare this to Splashway Bay on the Utopia Seas, which only has three water slides. Three water slides is still nothing to balk at, especially on a ship that's only sailing weekend cruises. However, doubling something is impressive. And the fact that these slides are absolutely insane just makes it even crazier. And while we're talking about all things aquatic, we have to talk about the pools. To my surprise, the Utopia Seas actually has more pools than the Star of the Seas. The Star of the Seas has seven pools where the Utopia has 10 pools. And these 10 pools on the Utopia Seas really have a large range. They go from quiet, serene pools to ones where DJs are spinning music and can be much more lively. This makes sense for me for the Utopia of the Seas specifically because this is just a very short cruise and people have different ideas of how they want to spend a very short weekend on vacation. The Utopia of the Seas is starting to get a reputation for a party ship and it has a lot of pool parties with a lot of upbeat, lively, energy filled music while some other pools are really serene, places where you can sit, read a book, which makes sense, any vacations like that, but I think that there is a very stark difference in some of the pool environments on this ship specifically. Now, both ships are still Royal Caribbean ships, which means they're going to have some of the coolest attractions there are on any cruise line, and that includes the Wave Runner, an ice skating rink, even though the Stars ice skating rink will be the largest ice skating rink at sea, the aqua shows that feature high dives and aquatic choreography, Central Park, Johnny Rockets, Sorrento's Pizza, etc., etc. They're all gonna have the rock climbing walls. They're gonna have the unique and tons of exciting, thrill-seeking things that you could do on board Royal Caribbean, which is why so many people love Royal Caribbean in the first place. But there are some key differences on things that one ship has over the other. The Star of the Seas has some really cool stuff that you won't unfortunately be able to have on the Utopia of the Seas. One of these being the Crown Edge. This is an Icon class exclusive, and it is a combination of a ropes course and a thrill ride. This is a whopping $90, which breaks down to $1 a second, which is by far the most expensive ride at sea, even more so than the iFly skydiving simulator they have on the Quantum class ships. And that only costs $49. But if you have the extra money, it does look like a really cool thing to do. But honestly, I really don't think you could beat anything more thrilling than the skydiving simulators outside on deck. I think that is one of the coolest things that Royal Caribbean has ever done. And I'm really surprised that they haven't moved forward with that. Also on the start of the seas, you have the swim and tonic bar, which this is a cruise line's first on this class of ship, which is a swim up bar, which is really nice. You can spend your whole day chilling in a pool. You don't have to worry about getting up and having to get a cocktail. You can spend your whole day just soaking up the sun, sipping cocktails. And honestly, that sounds like a dream for a Caribbean cruise getaway. Another area that is exclusive to the Star of the Seas is the hideaway. This is an adult-only area that is eight stories above sea level and it has a DJ. They're definitely going for a Vegas-style pool party vibe here, and it's really cool to see. They're basically taking the same energy that they have from Coco Key at the hideaway and bringing it on board, which I think is absolutely awesome. I think the Royal Caribbean is trying to cater more towards a family audience, but they are definitely going to make sure that the parents and the older adults are having a good time. It, which is surprising to me that they don't have this on the Utopia because the Utopia, like I said, is a party ship. 
because it is a short booze cruise length vacation. And I'm really surprising that they're not trying to go after this demographic as well. But let's talk about some of the cool things the Utopia of the Seas has because it is a booze cruise and they do lean into some of the bars pretty heavily. So let's talk about it. Also, I wanna preface this by saying the Star of the Seas hasn't announced everything that's on board yet. But as of the time of me making this video, this is only exclusive to Utopia so far. Utopia of the Seas is the only ship with the pesky parrot bar, and this bar is amazing. I think this is one of Pete's favorite bars on board the Utopia. It's a tiki themed bar with tons of exciting new cocktails. They have a crowd favorite, which is the new peanut butter pina, which is a peanut butter whiskey take on the classic pina colada, which honestly, on my vacation, I have to have at least one hundred pina coladas during the course of that week so to seeing that they're doing some variations of that to switch it up give people something new and exciting to try especially the fact that it comes in a cool tiki glass makes me really want to go on this ship just for this bar i feel like carnival is one of the only cruise lines that really leaned into like the tiki theme and i don't know why because when i think tropical i'm thinking hawaii beaches tiki and I think that they really hit the nail on the head with this one. Also exclusive to the Utopia, we have the Royal Railway, which is an immersive dining experience that has LED screen windows, and they show you going through the old vintage Midwest where you encounter bandits and cowboys back in like the 1800s. It's the super cool immersive five course meal. And as soon as you are walking into the restaurant, they greet you with a welcome moonshine cocktail that is exclusive to that restaurant, which is a really nice touch. And just a word of advice, if you're gonna be booking on Royal Caribbean, everything fills up extremely fast. And I'm not talking about getting on board and going and making a reservation immediately. I'm talking about months in advance. So if there's a restaurant that you really wanna to go to, like the Royal Railway, make sure that you book that as soon as you book your reservation for your cruise, because those will fill up incredibly fast and you won't be able to enjoy some of the main highlights of the ship. So. Just be cognizant of whenever you book your cruise to just go ahead and place your reservations at the same time. Now, Royal Caribbean is definitely not a premium cruise line. However, it is more expensive than the average cruise line. Pricings on these ships are definitely high, especially when you're considering a per day per person approach. Obviously, the Utopia of the Seas is gonna be much cheaper than the Star of the Seas because it is only a weekend cruise getaway. You're only gonna be paying that premium price for three days instead of seven days compared to the Star of the Seas. But no matter how much you pay, a three to four day cruise is still a three to four day cruise, which lends itself to being a party cruise, no matter what you can do. And they are leaning into it on the Utopia of the Seas. If you have been trying to follow the ship and watch some of the videos that are coming out out of the ship, there is a lot of twerking, partying, drinking, on the Utopia of the Seas, which I'm not saying is a bad thing, but just know what you're getting yourself into. We just wanna make sure you have all the facts. So if you're gonna go on the ship, definitely don't think it's gonna be the most relaxing environment on the pool decks because you're gonna be thoroughly disappointed. I know this is one of the main criticisms that came with the Utopia of the Seas is people were going on the wonder of the seas and they'd be going on for seven days and they feel like they still didn't have enough time on the ship. So now you're taking the same size ship, adding more venues to it, and you're condensing it from a seven day cruise to a three to four day cruise. It makes it really hard for customers to see the entire ship, let alone experience all the restaurants. There's 20 restaurants on board the Utopia. You have to go to seven restaurants a day, which is just absolutely absurd. I think they're trying to have people come back and be repeat customers, but at these prices, I feel like once you see that ship, you're kind of over it. You can go on the Wonder of the Seas, get the same exact experience, minus some of the bars and restaurants as I said earlier, but I think there's a disconnect on the size of the ship and doing weekend cruises. I do think the Star of the Seas is going to be an absolutely incredible ship when it comes out. The Icon is an absolutely amazing ship. I think these ships are just so big. I would love to see Royal Caribbean make a smaller size ship that's not fitting eight to 10,000 people. I would love to see a ship with like 4,000 people and still be a little bit smaller. Go into some of the ports that can only fit smaller ships and it still has all the technologies, all the modern looks, all of the really cool restaurants and experiences and just condense it onto a smaller ship. Kind of like what Norwegian did, they made a brand new ship called the Prima, which was a lot smaller than some of the newer classes that that cruise line had out but it was smaller, had all the bells and whistles, looks absolutely incredible, and there's a ton to do on that ship, 
but you're not feeling like it is mobbed everywhere when you go. Because if you know it's late night and you're going to Sorrento's, it's a, it's a lot to get a slice of pizza. I am curious though, what is the highlight of the star of the seas when you look at it? I think the hideaway is such a cool concept because I personally like listening to music while I'm on vacation and having a DJ being able to play music the entire time while you're hanging out, catching sunlight and hanging out in the pool. Sounds like a really fun environment for me personally, but I know everyone's different. So comment below what you're really excited about from the Star of the Seas. And if there's any key features that I missed in this video, let me know because you're gonna help somebody else because if you have a question, somebody else probably has the same question. But I wanna thank you guys so much for watching this video. We'll see you in the next one. Take it easy and peace.